Hello everybody, this is the last video tutorial about Untamed Beast. So I hope you have enjoyed watching the first video tutorials about this huge project. I hope you are enjoying our new system, new method to show you with this big zoom. We invest a lot of time to, to improve our cameras and everything. So I hope show you everything perfectly and bring you the possibility to improve your skill showing or seeing our video tutorials. So, because a lot of people asking me about paint with capy bases at 28 millimeters and paint with glazes in a 28 millimeters using the airbrush, I'm going to explain you in this video tutorial and I'm going to show you because this is my method, this is the way I work and this is my method designed by myself to paint 28 millimeters because I hate the glazing, I hate the typical method to paint 28 millimeters because I need to paint quicker, faster, and paint a lot of models in close deadlines. So this is the way I work, and I'm going to explain you everything. For example, the first one, I recommend you put on your wet palette all the colors that maybe you will use, or maybe you won't use them, but I recommend you have on your wet palette more than <laughs> only one, because maybe if you only have one brown to blend every on his skin maybe at the end the result looks like everything looks the same so if you have for example yellow orange magenta colors like that you can play and enjoy with more details and colors so you will get better results or at least this is my my thing so <laughs> uh, okay as for the colors how you have to start for example i'm painting with this kind of magenta because I want to bring him more life to this model. So for that reason, I've decided to use magenta on his knuckles, elbow and knees. So if you don't want to use them, for example, if you don't want to use magenta, you don't have to use magenta. Maybe if you want to use red, you can use it. Or maybe you want to use orange, you can use them. So don't worry about anything. So magenta, red and orange will work perfectly, all of them. So you don't have to use always the exactly color I used. So it's the pen of what kind of color skin have your model. You should use one color or another one. Maybe at the beginning, it's a bit tough to you understand what, which one you should choose. But the truth is, remember, this is to enjoy. So just test the colors. Maybe if you don't want to test over your model, you can paint on a paper with exactly the same colors or more or less the same and blend with the color that you can imagine. Over that, just to know what kind of color have as result. Because maybe if you are painting the skin with more magentas, maybe if you use greens on his skin, maybe you will desaturate the color. Maybe it's not the best idea. Or if you have a lot of orange on his skin and you want to use blues, maybe it's not the idea if you want to reinforce the saturation because it's again the complementary color. So be careful with that. And if the skin of your model and a barbarian, a human skin looks like yellow, be careful because maybe your model have an illness. So be careful with that. I don't recommend you never use yellow because maybe it could look like a very famous cartoon. <laughs> So if you use yellow, be careful with that. So I recommend you another kind of colors, but for sure, if you want to use it, use it. And be careful with violets or purples. So just that. So now you can see what kind of colors I'm using for that color scheme. This kind of browns with orange, this kind of magenta, and more colors crazy that you will see that I don't want to say now. <laughs> so you will discover. So, and for the people that they can't believe I'm using the airbrush, so this is the way I use the airbrush, blending always at the end. Because in my mind, using the glazing system or method at the beginning, it's uh, a long way to paint because you need to invest a lot of time just to blend and blend and blend. And then the result maybe is not the perfect result or the result that you wanted. So you have to fix it and you will need to blend and blend and blend again with glazing. So 
this method to me it's just to finish the model for sure i like the glazing but i like the glazing first with my airbrush because i'm going to do it quicker and then use my brush with the glazing if i need it just that and i'm going to explain you after the airbrush how to continue using the brush and blend with glazing with the brush so what have what do you have to know about the airbrush first can you remember everything that i explained you when you are painting cubby bases from the scratch at the beginning don't do it so <laughs> you have to start with your brush at the beginning from something darker i said like a first shadow and just going up and now with the airbrush you have to start with a mid-tone saturated and then the next colors will be darker for sure you can play with a lot of mid colors saturated colors different colors like orange yellow blues everything and then darker colors why i want to start in a mid color going down because if you try to paint with colors close to white the pigment from the white color it's thicker than this saturated color or darker so you will have like a dust result over your model so if you see like tiny dots tiny dust over your model is for that maybe because the color have a lot of matte varnish inside and maybe it's the the flatter that you are watching on your model or maybe it's because it's too near to pure white near to pure white means like ivory pale flesh and colors like that so to me all of them are white just that so don't use them <laughs> so for example what happened about the airbrush I recommend you make all the mixes on your wet palette and then put inside of your airbrush just with your brush just that something like that and what happened about the thinner and water so it's the pain of you the quantity of the thinner that you have to use how much thinner you will use better control you will have but more satin or glossy will have the result too so for that reason I use like 50 50 or 60 40 it's the pain of the result and the color if it's a bit satin I prefer use more water than thinner for example what happened on his horns if you remember them are like a white color or ivory or gray something like that and I thought that I need to focus more attention on the helmet and for that reason maybe play with a very very dark color and a very light color could be really really interesting so for that reason i've decided to blend with this kind of browns and then with colors close to the black or just black at the end but in tiny places so this is a perfect example about start with a mid-tone and then going down maybe you will lose something about the information so don't worry about anything about that because then you can use the brush again to paint the edge highlights if you need it or reinforce some shadows and I'm going to do. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so this is the way I love paint. So I want to, to show you everything from my heart. <laughs> For example, this kind of teeth or horns, tiny horns uh, from the axe, I like to paint them again, just to paint more details, more colors, dark tones in some places. And maybe at the end I have to repaint the edge highlights. Don't worry, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to paint again, just that. So now is the moment to blend everything with airbrush. And some moments you will lose the information that you made it. Don't worry about that. So if you are painting with glazing, with like a filters, so you need to paint a lot of layers over the same place to remove the detail. So for that reason, you see that I paint one, two, five, ten layers, maybe 20 in some places. It's a pain of the dilution. If you want to know more or less a perfect dilution, I recommend you, it's like a 90% water plus thinner and 10% paint just that if it's too boring because you need to paint 15 layers 
the dilution will be like a 80% water plus thinner and 20% paint. Just that. So don't try to paint with 50-50 or stuff like that because you will destroy everything. So I recommend you paint step by step and slower than when you use your brush. When you are using your brush, it's like a sketch. For sure, you have to paint correctly in the places where you have to paint to get better quality every layer. But now it's opposite. Everything is opposite. <laughs> For example, now I have a crazy color, something different. Why Sergio is using green over some places? Just because I want to do a different tonality. Just that. So in some places you won't see them. So I recommend you see my model, the photos on social media about that model and try to recognize the colors that now you are watching because I'm using a lot of crazy colors over that skin. So if you want to use green, use it. So this is your hobby. You have to enjoy painting your models. So don't feel stressed about anything. If you want to blend with blues, with greens, just do it. So what do you think about this NMM? So I explained you in an easy way and now I'm going to add some final details, but it's done to me. And remember, I'm showing you everything in a huge zoom. So that model is very tiny. So don't feel that something is wrong because you are seeing everything. So to me, the model is blended everything. So I have the smoothness or the smooth quality that I like it because in some places I want to use this result or this way to paint, but in some others I want to keep the texture or stuff like that. So it's depend of you what is the result. For example, now on his helmet, you will see that I'm painting and painting and painting and looks like I didn't do anything. <laughs> so, but you can start to see something else because this is the way I work. So with filters like that. So I need to paint like five or 10 layers just to start to see. So you will see like glossy areas. So this is the area where I'm painting. Just reinforce some places like shadows or blend with mid-tones in some places where I need it. So and more or less, this is the result. Blended everything with airbrush. And after that, I'm going to blend the base, the ground, and then I'm going to use the brass to continue working on that model, just to bring you my best knowledge on that model. So you can see on the wet palette that I'm using more or less all the colors. However, if I have only four colors, at the end, I'm going to use only four colors. If I have 15, maybe at the end, I'm going to use 10, but will be more colors than only use four. So maybe it's just to paint a final touch in some places, like, a, I don't know, a, a, a 1% of the model, but maybe this, a per, this 1%, it's the key in some places. For example, now I'm adding more green, browns, blues, stuff like that, different colors on the ground, just to show you that this is an interesting way to represent the ground. Why? Because this is something that should be natural. So if you want to represent stones or rocks on the ground, I recommend you play with more colors that only gray. <laughs> so I hate gray stones. So I hate that um, that single color to paint everything. So I like play with a lot of colors because in my mind works much better and because it's more natural to me. But for sure, if you want to start painting only with gray, because you are a beginner perfectly. So step by step, don't worry about anything. So maybe if I use blues on that areas because I want to represent the humidity on the grass, 
maybe to you is too much. So and you need to keep it just with only green or only brown and will be perfect too. Remember that more close you paint on your model, lower pressure you have to use. Because if you paint very close to your model and you paint with a very high pressure, maybe you will paint a lot and make spiders and everything. So if in some moments you make spiders, I recommend you blow, continue blowing with the air of the airbrush, trying to move the drop of the water to a place where you have shadow and then try to blend with something darker there with their brush or with your brush just to try to fix it but never try to touch with your fingers because maybe you will do something wrong so and this is the way to work with the airbrush at least this is the way I do and this is the result so if you like it I recommend you test it so don't try to change nothing just test it learn from my way and then if you want to flip or mix with other ways for sure I recommend you paint with something that you love it just that if you only want one method do it if you want to mix with three or four methods just do it so it's up to you remember this is your hobby and you have to enjoy painting models and waste or spend your painting please <laughs> don't keep it as a real a real key so don't save to whole life <laughs> so don't have them as in an investment so try to spend your painting painting models <laughs> Okay, so as for the airbrush, to me it's done. So now is the moment to start to use inks, to paint the leather or wraps, stuff like that. How I'm going to use them? I blend with my airbrush, but I want to reinforce them to have a satin or glossy effect in some places. If you dilute more the ink with water, you will have more satin. And if you paint straight from the pot, you will have more glossy. So I recommend you make a mix this is up to you more like 50 50 or 60 40 something like that more or less always i recommend you something like that because glazing eh, it's okay but i hate paint 90 percent and 10 percent paint with my brush because i need to invest a lot of time so i think like 50 50 or 60 40 it's perfect so and more or less i try to find some places where i can add the shadow and just add one mid-tone and then something darker if I need it. How I can get a dark brown? I don't recommend you use black and brown. I recommend you add to this brown, for example, orange, green or blue if you want something darker. Just to change the color or make it darker. And I work like that with the tip of my brush on every part of the wrap or the leather. Something like that. If you have something darker, will be darker, deeper. If you have something with light, this light will turn to the new color. Something easy, I think. So you can play with different colors like greens, stuff like that, that I'm doing, for example, there. To bring you more tonalities. So I love the colors and this is the way I work. <laughs> so if you don't want to paint with my crazy colors, don't worry. So this is just because I love it, just that. As you see, that part I think will be easier than the first one because I start with glazing, at the end you didn't paint the technical part. So the technical part, as the name said, is technically. So maybe at the beginning it's difficult, but once time you understood, it will be easy and you will have the possibility to paint everything. Remember, think about the geometrical shapes, as always I explain you, and make some focus on your model. So if you want to put the focus on the helmet, 
just try to have more light or intensity or saturation there and if you want to for example move the light to the helmet you can use this trick i used on the horns and use something darker outside to move the light to the center so everything is a trick this is my taste this is that i said this, the artistic part so this is just play and play and play with colors and models i can give you some ideas tools to do it but every model it's a different project and completely different so you can start completely different and finish completely different again so for example i'm reinforcing down now some areas where i felt that i removed the shadow or it's a bit flat so i added the shadow and now the edge highlights again with a dilution like a 50 50 the dilution that i explained you that you can use to melt or have a smooth surface with your brush before to use the brush so the same dilution i use now so you can see that just with the tip of my brush with one layer it's done so it's not like a copy base but more or less so you can compare both horns and you can compare the differences about work on that way or not so here you have the result if you like it just go ahead for example here i need again the edge highlight because i lose it with my airbrush and i put this kind of edging and just that something i think easy now <laughs> so and with this uh, turquoise i have to say bye bye so it was a pleasure bring you all my knowledge on this 28 millimeters i've i've seen your feedback about this project uh, 28 and you want to see more like that so i would like to continue working on this kind of models to bring you all my knowledge to paint the best 28 millimeters so again thank you very much for your huge support so it was awesome to me and to vanessa because we want to bring you our best with the new setup the new camera the new zoom everything so we invest much more time but we think that it's much better so again thank you very much so i don't have more to say bye bye